Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Constitutional Reform Committee says Privy Council removal not its priority right now. Take the influenza vaccine, the word of caution from health professionals as respiratory illnesses increase. And later in sports, world champion Sharika Jackson headlines Jamaicans down to compete at opening Diamond League meet on Friday. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. The Constitutional Reform Committee says removing the UK-based Privy Council as a final court of appeal is not at the fore of the move to Jamaica becoming a republic. In a release issued this morning, the committee says it met yesterday and deliberated on the matter of Jamaica's final court of appeal. Now, the committee is of the view that the decision on the Privy Council, while necessary for what it calls the Jamaicanizing and decolonization of the Jamaica Constitution, is not a prerequisite for Jamaicans proceeding to a referendum for Jamaica to become a republic. The CRC has written to both main political parties requesting them to outline their positions on the Privy Council and a final appellate court for Jamaica. In the meantime, the CRC is assuring Jamaicans that the Privy Council as Jamaica's final appellate court is on its agenda and they will have a voice in the deliberations that will advise the government appropriately after deliberations and consultations. In the meantime, church groups met with representatives of the Constitutional Reform Committee to discuss several burning issues to which they want answers. Head of the Jamaica Evangelical Alliance, Bishop Dr. Alvin Bailey, and all the church leaders have raised concern following Tuesday's revelation by the Justice Minister of requests being made for marriage licenses for same-sex unions in Jamaica. While voicing their disapproval for same-sex unions, the church heads want to make it clear that they do not support any legislative move in that direction. Our fellow ministers have told us, and Jamaica likewise. But let me just categorically say without fear of contradiction that the Jamaican government is coming under pressure and the church is pushing back with everything theologically and, and ceremonially and ecclesiastically that we can because it's against the laws of God. Um, so... That's not their only issue. Well, the church has decided to meet with the uh, Constitution Committee of the, uh, 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 headed by the Honorable Malahu Fort. And so we will definitely be meeting tomorrow to discuss some and, and to get the opportunity to ask questions, which we quite believe that they are competent to answer and they are willing to answer. And in fact, I must say that I want to commend the committee for being willing to meet with not only the church as stakeholders but other stakeholders to answer the necessary questions. Renewed appeals this afternoon for the public to take the influenza vaccine and for others to take serious precautions amidst an increase in respiratory illnesses. This time it is coming from the Northeast Regional Health Authority which is seeing a 300% rise in respiratory cases. Kalisha Williams has that story. The Northeast Regional Health Authority, NERA, consists of St. Anne, St. Mary, and Portland. According to the regional medical epidemiologist, Dr. Deborah Ware, between January 1 and April 24, 2023, there have been 1,054 cases of respiratory illnesses in the region. And when we compare this with last year, 2022, January to April the 24th, we had 314 cases. So we are noted, we're noting an approximate threefold increase in the number of respiratory cases. The brunt of the cases are being seen in St. Anne with 603 persons falling ill with respiratory conditions. For St. Mary, there have been 222 cases, and in Portland, 229. Dr. Ware said mostly young and middle-aged people ages 5 to 59 are being impacted. The government had indicated that there has been an increase in flu-like illnesses since the start of the year and have warned Jamaicans to protect themselves. As for what is happening in NERA, we categorize the on a broad syndromic just to capture persons who may present with any respiratory symptoms and fever. It could be the cough, um, sneezing and such who may present to our primary care or even our secondary care 
facilities who may present with respiratory cases. She said while there has been no deaths and the cases have not been severe, things could get worse if Jamaicans get complacent. And on top of that, appeals for more Jamaicans to get vaccinated. We see many persons still not, you know, they have, I don't want to say abandon the masks, but you know, these are things that will um, decrease the number of cases. We also strongly recommend persons to get their influenza vaccines, all right? And this is readily available in our primary care setting in all our three parishes. Kelisha Williams, TVJ News. Another call this afternoon for the government to re-examine the compensation review program. The program has seen several issues with mounting complaints from unions and workers, which is why the opposition insists it needs to be revisited. Hal Shane Burke has the details. Some public sector unions are still up in arms about government's compensation review program. The unions say certain employee benefits, which were not discussed, have been changed now that the contracts have been signed with the finance ministry. This has led to unease in the public sector. Opposition spokesman on finance, Julian Robinson, says the concerns should be a hint to the government for a reset of the program. Many of the same unions who last year run out quick, quick, quick and sign, they are the ones now saying... We never know. We never know so the increment that we used to get every year take away from it. Yes. Something is wrong. We supported the compensation review in principle because we felt we had to reduce the number of levels from 300 to 60 in principle. But all along we said we needed transparency and equity. We said you needed to tell people what they were going to get. But he says transparency, which the opposition and public servants were envisioning, was not there. He also took aim at the delay in payments to the nation's teachers. And if you have a reason why people are going to be paid late, then you have to explain to them that their pay is going to be late. It can be on the 25th. Teacher looking at them account from morning, sign on to the app, go up online for see the money, and then you go and tell them they must be patient. Madness, not gang or something. We're looking out for men and we're watching men because we want to ensure that our public servants are treated with dignity. Mr. Robinson, who was speaking at a PNP divisional conference in Manchester recently, told party supporters not to be worried about rumors of a cabinet reshuffle. Don't watch that because if it's the same policies that they're going to implement, they can't move Jamaica forward. We can't move Jamaica forward. We are even though we have the lowest unemployment rate, the majority of Jamaicans are working poor. They are live hand to mouth. We need a new direction. The People's National Party will provide that. A new direction where we lift Jamaica out of what we call this low wage, low growth economy. Where we put investment in education in early childhood so that young children, two to six, can leave school, not just reading and writing, but then can reason from that young age. He also noted that irrigation will be a major focus of the next PNP government. Hal Shane Burke, TVJ News. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News, but please stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. A committee has been set up to steer the long-awaited rehabilitation of the Kingston Public and Victoria Jubilee Hospitals. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton gave the update in the House of Representatives on Wednesday during the sectoral debate. We have started. We have already set up a committee involving the chairmanship, the permanent secretary, but a wide stakeholder cross-section of persons, experts. We, have, we are looking now uh, uh, for a consultant firm to do an audit of the institution. We have committed $300 million this year to start some minor rehabilitative work plus the operating theaters under the code care facility. Great. We have also, based on a cabinet decision, linked St. Joseph's Hospital with Kingston Public Hospital. And St. Joseph's Hospital will be an extension of KPH, focusing primarily on oncology and nephrology. In the meantime, the University Hospital of the West Indies will also be upgraded. And dollars has been set aside in this year's budget to begin the work. 
We have gone to tender. I understand that that process is to be completed soon for reworking the ring road, expanding it, clearing the site for a greenfield building nice. valued at some 30 million US dollars, a six story building to renew and restore the University Hospital of the West Indies. Madam Speaker, we will, this administration, rebuild and retrofit the University Hospital of the West Indies. The government says the work to build out the Lionel Densham Aerodrome in St. Elizabeth is far advanced. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett, who visited the area recently, says the Transport Ministry has been carrying out extensive work on the area. Mr. Bartlett explained how the country could benefit from the development. To build out an aerodrome in this area is very important and tourism supports it fully. And we're excited that the process has actually started. I know it's a little way to go because of what is required to do it. But um, we will work with the Ministry of um, Transport, as we always do, to bring that to uh, fruition in short, short order. Because I'm telling you, the growth rate here in this area of the South Coast is phenomenal. Jason Hensel, chairman of Jake's Hotel Villas and Spa, told TBJ News that an impact assessment study is to be conducted On, this month. We are in advanced discussions with the government of Jamaica in terms of a reverse divestment um, where we would be handing over the land um, to the government to the upgrading. So there is currently an economic impact assessment study being done now by an aviation consultant that should be ready by the end of May. Um, so we're doing the right um, processes, um, getting stakeholders on board, building awareness um, and support for the project. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett has turned his attention to the world's most populated country, India, as a country to pull visitors from in coming years. This as part of a renewed campaign to diversify Jamaica's tourist markets. We are now talking with travel agents, tour operators and airlines and we expect that um, this uh, Indian engagement will add significantly to the new market thrust that we are embarking on in this fiscal year. Currently, Jamaica gets the bulk of its visitors from the United Kingdom, the United States and Canada. Minister Bartlett arrived in Dubai on the weekend ahead of the Arabian Travel Market, the largest tourism trade show in the Middle East, accompanied by Director of Tourism Donovan White and Senior Advisor and Strategist in the Ministry of Tourism Delano Seawright. The U.S. Central Bank has raised interest rates to the highest level in 16 years as it battles to stabilize prices. The Federal Reserve increased its key interest rate by 0.25 percentage points, its 10th hike in 14 months. The Fed signaled that Wednesday's rise may be its last one for now. The moves have pushed its benchmark rate to between 5% and 5.25%, up from near zero in March 2022. Oil and gas giant Shell has reported a stronger-than-expected profit of $9.6 billion for the first three months of the year. The figure is higher than profits for the same period last year, despite a slide in energy prices. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Hal Shane Burke. Time now for the top international stories. And police have searched the home of former President Jair Bolsonaro in the Brazilian capital, Brasilia, as part of an investigation into his COVID-19 vaccination records. Police suspect the ex-leader's vaccination record was forged so he could gain entry to the U.S. Officers seized the mobile phone of the former president and that of his wife and arrested some of his close aides as part of the operation. Mr. Bolsonaro has denied any wrongdoing. And those are the top international stories. I'm Carrie and Simpson. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Spencer Darlington will have your midday sports report. <laughs> 